Greetings to everyone. My name is Krzysztof Fenvesi. I work in the University of Hyveskule in the Finnish Institute for Educational Research. I'm very glad to welcome you in the Brain Week in this celebration of the human mind. My talk connected uh, to the topic will be about the relationship between education, games, and various creativities. In the Finnish Institute for Educational Research, I work in the research group for innovative learning environments. In this research group, we are interested, of course, in the physical surroundings, the physical space, the physical environment of learning, but we are also want to know more about the mental environment, the processes, the effects of the community, the using of different devices, using technology uh, during learning, and also using games in uh, learning. As you uh, already might heard about, there is a very uh, interesting approach in uh, educational research. It's called STEAM. STEAM is an acronym. It's made up uh, from the words of science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. And it's especially interested about the connections uh, between these fields, how education, how learning can go beyond the limits of each of these fields, of each of these subjects, and create uh, something more, something multi-perspectival uh, from uh, these connections uh, between these fields in the process of learning. As you know, our university, University of Juvascula, has renewed and reopened uh, the library under the name of Lagde, which means the source. And the new space, the new environment is really a cradle of new connections, new relationships, and also a new uh, learning space, uh, an open learning environment. I'm really glad that uh, this space also includes a gallery, a uh, gallery for art and science connections. And uh, there is a very interesting exhibit. The first exhibit in the gallery is by Ernst Matter Borström, a prominent Finnish artist who has really interesting artworks which represents also connections between actually many of the steam fields. You can see that uh, how many connections has been made in different visual effects and different mediums of art in Ernst Matters uh, Borström and even uh, the uh, space represents uh, this multiplicity uh, that is uh, also uh, a little uh, uh, exhibition space and in the exhibition space also uh, that is connected an auditorium uh, where you can uh, have uh, live stream uh, events but also there is a workshop space where uh, we expect uh, to have school children coming and many visitors coming who are also participating actively uh, in the life of Lavde and also in the uh, in contributing uh, to these exhibits. There is also an invitation for playing uh, with Ernst Matter uh, Boriström ideas and uh, you can find several interactive games uh, also physical objects what uh, you can manipulate what you can hands-on transform to immerse more deeper and get a more integrated understanding of uh, Ernst Matter's uh, visual world as well with the help of these games uh, what you can find <clears throat> in the gallery space. In fact, when we are talking about the history of uh, painting and visual culture and the connections of visual culture to thinking, we cannot forget about uh, one of the greatest inspirator of uh, Ernst Matter's Borström art, who was a Dutch uh, painter called uh, Piet Mondrian. And uh, in this uh, 
year we are celebrating the 150th uh, anniversary of this uh, major artist who made uh, a great influence on the visual language uh, of uh, the 20th century. You can see some of the characteristic uh, artworks uh, by Mondrian. And when you take a look into these artworks and uh, you know a little bit more about the context, you can recognize that uh, there are many connections actually with books of mathematics, with this colorful uh, presentation of uh, Euclid's famous work, The Element. You can see this direct relationship uh, between the visual world of Euclid, the origin of the source of uh, geometry and uh, uh, geometrical thinking, and also the art uh, by Mondrian. So Mondrian was really tried to visualize the essential, the pure beauty and the balance. And that's why he went back uh, to the classics of geometry and also went back uh, to the sources, to the basics such as uh, Euclid. Actually, it was a visual journey, an intellectual journey, and uh, we can see the stops, the milestones, the stepping path of uh, Mondrian in different uh, paintings that how he went deeper and deeper and how he found geometry and geometrical expression and uh, basic colors like the red, blue, yellow uh, and white uh, to express the universal forces as, as he uh, called it uh, in his uh, theosophic uh, approach uh, to express his vision of art and reality. And when uh, you can uh, see uh, these works, uh, you can also see them as a kind of a visual game, as a, as a kind of a puzzle, uh, which uh, certainly have some rules, which sort of invite you as a, as a visitor, as a viewer, uh, to enjoy it uh, and to play with it. It's an invitation uh, for, a, for an intellectual and visual uh, play when you can see uh, these works. And indeed, uh, when we are talking about the connectionships uh, between art and mathematics, uh, we can see that uh, there are many playful ideas uh, also driving and helping problem solving. And concentration, meditation and flow are very much uh, connected uh, to this mental state, uh, which is also uh, needed uh, for problem solving. And actually, there are even physical games possible uh, to be related with this art of Mondrian, for example, just as we saw in the uh, example of Ernst Matter uh, Borström's games. So this game Mondrian Blocks uh, has been born uh, from the idea of a major Hungarian uh, mathematician and psychologist, uh, Professor uh, Laszlo Mere. And he came up with this uh, puzzle as a possible challenge for an escape room. And you can see the first prototypes of the idea in the format of uh, Lego block uh, compositions. And you can see also the playfulness and also the limitless uh, imagination already in, in these first uh, prototypes. So when it comes down uh, to pure geometry, to mathematics, to calculations as well, you can see uh, this interesting uh, basic uh, connection, but uh, caught also Professor Mere's attention that uh, when he started uh, to uh, draw up these blocks, he recognized that these are exactly uh, 40, uh, 64 uh, units, which uh, as you know, uh, it's equal uh, with the uh, chess board, the eight by eight uh, board. And um, he immediately saw a lot of puzzles hidden uh, in this, in this uh, uh, connection, in this setting. And uh, he sort of discovered uh, this puzzle opportunity in this very uh, special 
uh, setting and he also could see many different uh, 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 difficulties uh, of uh, these with this puzzle so uh, as, as also a learning path uh, for problem solving and this is what he published actually in his book it was called the eightfold path and uh, this book is about intellectual flexibility and one of the major game what he introduced and many games uh, what he introduced are based uh, on these connections uh, which I just introduced you. However, uh, a game designer uh, stepped into the scene who actually identified the connectionship uh, between Mera's uh, mathematical idea and Mondrian's visual world and that's how uh, the uh, game Mondrian blocks has born. So you can also see the uh, creative uh, interrelations and effects uh, between different minds and different approaches. What is needed uh, also in a, such a creative pro process, uh, which is uh, a game uh, design process. So now we can see uh, these Mondrian blocks uh, in uh, different uh, color uh, settings and there are even the different challenges inside the boxes and when we can see these uh, blocks in the hands of children uh, we can see that uh, how uh, manipulation the work of the hands and the work of the brain the work of the mind is really connected interrelated uh, in this uh, process and also uh, when you can see the different uh, uh, challenges you can see this flexibility uh, the multiplicity of different puzzles hidden uh, in this one object. With uh, Mondrian blocks, there are also different uh, kind of uh, game modes. You can see uh, here the sort of solo game mode, uh, which uh, you can uh, play alone. And here uh, you uh, place the black uh, units, which you cannot move. And then uh, you need to place the rest of the uh, units, the rest of the modules to have no gaps and uh, no overlapping. Uh, and there is one solution of uh, each uh, of the challenges. However, there are new and new game modes are coming up, are borning uh, from this uh, puzzle, which even didn't uh, uh, identify uh, when uh, this puzzle was created. So for example, this two player uh, game mode, it's a so-called NIM uh, game where the different players are placing uh, each of the units uh, one by one in a random order and the winner who is uh, uh, placing uh, the last uh, block. So there is two rounds uh, in this game because then the empty units are calculated. These are the points uh, of the winner. And then uh, in the end of the second round, you can see that who collected uh, more points and then that's the winner. Of course, uh, even uh, equal uh, balance uh, can be also achieved uh, in this game. And uh, this is a very interesting game because my experience that uh, it's like an ageless uh, uh, game. I, I play it in the same joy uh, with my uh, children, uh, like with uh, serious mathematicians. And I still feel have a chance to win or lose whoever is on the other side uh, of the board. So it's a very uh, interesting, fun game. However, uh, there are many more games which we are just recognizing. Now, of course, the very classic uh, game Tangram uh, also existed in many cultures. This is also a great fun uh, which you can do uh, with the uh, Mondrian blocks. But let's uh, take a look behind the curtains and let's uh, have some hypothesis uh, about uh, this game. So our hypothesis is that this game uh, can be even more. It can be also a measurement and development tool in psychology. It can be a useful uh, STEAM uh, education uh, toolkit, a new material. So we decided uh, to uh, create uh, curricula uh, in connection with this and why uh, we 
have uh, this hypothesis because uh, if you take a look uh, to the uh, intelligence uh, studies that what's the human intelligence what are the main constituents you can find working memory verbal comprehension perceptual organization processing speed so these are all contributing uh, to the measurements uh, of um, intelligence and at least uh, three of these components we can see very very strongly and very very directly represented uh, in this game uh, like the Mondrian blocks and in, in many other uh, logical games, many other geometrical games. That's an, that's an interesting connection that uh, geometry uh, sort of uh, and logic has the access to these very basic uh, cognitive uh, skills, uh, which uh, are modularly contributing to the way of we are thinking and how we are creating complex thoughts, complex models, and how we are learning, actually. So uh, there is the number, connection, dimensions, areas, flexible thinking, critical thinking, reasoning, perceptual organization, and all uh, what I already mentioned, which makes actually this toolkit very similar to those test tools, which uh, has been uh, introduced in a, in a labora laboratory uh, circumstances uh, to, to measure uh, these kind of human capacities. However, when uh, the measurement happening in a laboratory uh, with uh, model tools, with not real uh, objects, uh, but it's as a, a simulated uh, circumstances, then researchers always need uh, to calculate uh, with the difference uh, between the measurements and also the actual processes. So that's why uh, Mondrian blocks as a, as a real game uh, can uh, provide uh, maybe even better uh, uh, results and even more it can tell us uh, when we use it with different uh, measurements, uh, for example, when we combine it uh, with digital uh, toolkits. But in the end, uh, we can say that problem solving becomes fun uh, with uh, Mondrian blocks as well. That's what uh, encouraged us uh, to take a look at what uh, kind of uh, education method we can connect to it. So the cognitive uh, training and also the relationship uh, to mathematics and uh, relationship to different uh, definitions and different challenges uh, using the Mondrian blocks and the transformation of the gaming experience into knowledge uh, that really uh, uh, help us uh, to explore this. And also the motivation, the joyfulness, the flow, uh, what uh, the game offer, that's uh, really uh, special uh, actually. And it's also uh, an interesting opportunity to think about, for example, cognitive sports. We already tested uh, some uh, solutions, uh, how we can introduce it uh, as, a, as a collaborative uh, gaming activity when uh, there are uh, competition around this and uh, it had very interesting uh, results. So we even organized a huge hybrid uh, competition between European and Chinese uh, students in China. There is a great culture of uh, all these uh, logical games and they are really using it uh, as part of everyday education. And you can see also the Finnish uh, children uh, playing it in the school uh, of uh, Yuka Cinemaki's uh, classroom. And uh, also in the other picture, you can see this massive uh, Chinese uh, uh, competition. So we have a team of researchers and uh, uh, ex experts uh, to explore better uh, Mondrian blocks and a number of other games uh, from uh, these uh, multidisciplinary aspects. And we want to see that how these connections uh, contribute uh, to the next level education, to STEAM upgrading uh, education, uh, if you uh, want to uh, say so. Due to the international recognition of Mondrian blocks, we had the honor to start the 150th anniversary year 
of Mondrian in the Museum of Mathematics in New York as their Family Fridays uh, program. And now we already have invitations to Peru, to France, to Transylvania, just for this single day of the so-called Pi Day, the 14th of March, when we celebrate the International Day of uh, Mathematics with uh, UNESCO uh, organization. And the topic will be Mathematics is Everywhere. So please check out this program in the same time uh, with the Brain Week. There are fantastic events all around the globe. You can find International Day of Mathematics uh, homepage. And of course, there is a strong uh, research background behind all of this. The aesthetics of interdisciplinarity, art and mathematics connections. And we can see also the creative ecosystems, the creative ecologies, uh, how uh, these are uh, coming together also in this kind of educational applications, educational innovations, just as I try to introduce to, in connection with the uh, Montreal Blocks uh, curriculum. And there is also a great emphasis on the multiple and diverse formats of different creativities. So we tend to talk about creativity as a singular known, but it might be real high time to recognize creativities as, uh, uh, as multiplicity. And uh, we need to see also these uh, processes in their uh, complexity, as you could uh, see in, in this uh, diagram. And as you could also experience in complex classrooms, like uh, what uh, Yuka Sinemaki and his students uh, created uh, in the Uvascula uh, Christian School. So it's definitely worth to take at least a virtual visit in Yuka's uh, classroom. You can find Yuka Sinemaki's classroom on YouTube in the social media. It's uh, actually the most uh, visited post, uh, social media post in all time in Finnish history, uh, what he uh, created uh, by introducing uh, his classroom. And there are many other collaborations, not only uh, in Uvascula, not only in Europe, but we have very interesting uh, collaborations in Africa, for example, in uh, South Africa, where we are contributing with this art and mathematics combinations to the reform of the South African uh, curriculum to see more the richness, the patterns, the uh, multiple uh, cultural influences of uh, mathematics. You can see these artworks from South African students and also those activities uh, which are uh, surrounding uh, these uh, developments. And of course, there are new books uh, I are coming, which uh, I'm really happy to uh, bring into your attention. So uh, this one uh, will be uh, coming uh, with articles together with my uh, colleagues. Uh, this is a project uh, where we uh, contributed and this book is summarizing the results of this project. So informal learning in formal environments, competence development, and also, of course, these all processes need to be started and actually they are starting as early as when we born. So early childhood education is really very important. And this book is uh, providing a great uh, summary of uh, all those uh, playful methods and playful approaches in early childhood education, which are contributing the best uh, to the cognitive development uh, of us, of our brain, of our mind, and which are also keeping our intellectual curiosity open and excited all during our lifetime in the spirit of lifelong learning. And these lifelong learning aspects 
will be brought back, uh, also brought into light with various tools in the Ernst Matter Borström exhibition in Lagde, in the uh, Uvascular University's uh, library in the Open Science Center. So I really hope that I can meet uh, a lot of children there, uh, school children, students there, and introduce also Borström's uh, connections in the forms of all of these hands-on uh, approaches, hands-on tools, which help to recreate the connection between our hands and our brains to contribute uh, to the uh, cognitive development on its best. Thank you a lot uh, for your attention. You can find me also uh, in this email and also physically in the University of Uvascula. I really hope uh, that uh, you enjoyed this introduction and I really hope that one day we will have the opportunity for a real life conversation. Thank you a lot.